Satipurtra Atra Surupam Rupam Tasya Kratya Vuri Purim Maturim Kostuvatim Rarha Kunda Magirivanam thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmatiya Paramaradatama, Guru Padapa. Nitilila Pravish Om Vishnupad Ashtotara Sutasri Rupanura Charivarya Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev, Sila Bhakti Prakyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, to Sila Prabhupada, and to all of our Sri Gopanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. 
And finally, alphabet pranam, two dissembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Vanchakal Patru Vesta, Kripa says to be ever chan, Puditana Bhavani, Vaishnavi Pyona Mohana. By the causes mercy of Sri Guran Gauranga, for the last two days we have been hearing the pastimes of Sri Krishna and his associates. How Sri Krishna made his associates appear in this world first, and then how Sri Krishna, in the form of his Vaibhav of Prakash expansion appeared from the womb of Devaki in Mathura, that is Abhirbhav, and then Vasudev Maharaj carried him to Gokul. But in Gokul, hmm, Sri Krishna was born from the womb of Madhya Shoda, and that is Swayam Bhagavan, the original Swayam Rup, form of the Supreme Lord. Hmm? Nanya Apekshiki Yadrupa Swayam Rupa so Uchate, Swayam Rup or Swayam Bhagavan is that form who is not dependent on any other forms for his Aishwarya, his powers and his Madhurya, his sweetness. So now this is mm, describing the birth of Krishna and the celebration in Nanda Gopal. Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, chapter 5, verse 1. So you can repeat. Sri Shuka Uvacha, Sri Shuka Uvacha, Nanda Stvatma Jautpanne, Nanda Stvatma Jautpanne, Jata Lado Mahamana, Jata Lado Mahamana, Ahuya Vipran Vedakyan, Ahuya Snataha suchi alankataha So first of all, Sri Shuka Uvacha That means Shuka Shukadev Goswami said But here he's called Sri Shuka So what does Sri Shuka mean? It means that when Shukadev Goswami is describing Krishna's birth and the celebration of the bridge basis, that Shukadev Goswami is experiencing intense transcendental ecstasy. Why? Because Shukadev Goswami is there. When a speaker is speaking Harikatha, sometimes Krishna himself is causing the spurti of that Leela in the heart of the devotee. And then as an anubhav, as a reaction, the kata is coming from the lips of the devotee. And sometimes the devotee has a desire. I want to tell this particular kata. And then as he's speaking that kata, Krishna is performing that pastime. Mm -hmm. So this is why speaking Krishna kata is a seva. Why? Because those who have prayed, when they speak the kata, it makes Krishna do that pastime there and then, and Krishna experiences great joy from that pastime. <laughs> so in this way, the speaker of Hari Kata is giving joy to Krishna because he is making Krishna re-experience that pastime again, in real time. So Shukadeva Goswami, is actually there in Nanda Gokul and he's seeing everything. Oh, Krishna has been born hmm? to Nanda Maharaj. Hmm? So he's saying, hmm? describing the joy of Nanda Maharaj in this verse. So because Shukadev Goswami, when he's seeing the joy of Krishna's birthday in Gokul, his hairs are standing on end. His body is trembling. His tears are flowing from his eyes. So Shukadev Goswami looks so beautiful. 
with these astasatic bars, ecstatic symptoms. Therefore, Sri Shuka Uvacha. Hmm? Now another meaning. Sri Shuka Uvacha. Why does Shukadev Goswami appear to be so beautiful? Perhaps you know that in the Vedic culture when there's a birth of a child, hmm? then the people celebrate, especially those in the cowherd villages, they celebrate by throwing milk and yogurt and ghee and they smear it on each other's faces. Hmm? So Shukadev Goswami, in his samadhi, in his trance, he was seeing the celebration in Nanda Goku. Now, perhaps you know that there's a great Vaishnava in our line named Srinivas Acharya. Once he was chanting Harinam and he was sitting chanting the Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And in his meditation, he was seeing Radha Krishna's holy lila and how the coward boys and coward girls, they're throwing colors at each other. But then when he finished chanting and he opened his eyes, then he saw that on his cloth in this world, there was red color all over his cloth. So sometimes it happens that the devotee's meditation is so intense that the symptoms from the internal meditation, they manifest outside. So, Sri Shuka Uvacha, Shuka is Sri, very beautiful, because his realization, his meditation on the celebration in Nanda Gokul was so intense that some of that yogurt that the bridge basses were throwing at each other was appearing on the face and on the body of Shukadev Goswami. So he looks so beautiful. Therefore, Sri Shuka Uvacha, Shukadev Goswami, who is speaking to Prichit Maharaj, and all the sages, but miraculously, the yogurt of Nanda Goku is appearing on his face and body, and he looks very beautiful. Now, in this chapter, chapter 5, Shukadev Goswami will speak in eight, 18 verses hmm? the essence of Ananda Tattva, the Tattva of Ananda, transcendental joy. Now, in all four rasas, Dasa Sakya Vatsali and Madhurya, there are two aspects, yog and ayog or viyog, that is meeting and separation. Now, how does the joy of meeting come to its fullest perfection? Hmm? That goes through four stages. So the four stages are Aprapti. Aprapti, you have not prapti, you have not attained the object of your love. Then prapti, hmm, you attain. Then siddhi, the perfection of that attainment. And then bhukti, the relishment of that meeting. So Shukadev Goswami is describing the four stages of Anantattva. The four stages of joy. So, in this, aprapti, not attained, means when Nanda and Yashoda, they're married for many years but they have no child. Hmm? So Krishna is aprapti, they have not attained the son. But then, when Madhya Yashoda becomes pregnant, now, Prapti, they've attained a child, but he's not born yet. So that is Prapti. So, that Prapti is, there is great joy, because after our Prapti, not having a, a child, now Madhya shoulders become pregnant, then Prapti, oh, now the Ananda is beginning to manifest. So then, Siddhi, hmm? Siddhi means, Krishna is born. Now it's accomplished. They have accomplished their joy in Krishna's birth. So then there's more joy. And then when they celebrate Krishna's birth, then it becomes bhukti. That is the full relishment of the Ananda. So, let's 
To discuss the aprapti, the not attainment of the sun, we have to set the scene. Go back a few generations. There was a king in the Yadu dynasty named Deva Middha. Deva Middha Maharaj had two wives, one wife who was a Katriya, Katriyani, and one wife who was a Gopi, a Vaisha. So from the Katriyani, he had a son named Shura. And Shura had a son named Basudev Maharaj. So that is Basudev Maharaj in Mathura, the Yadus in Mathura. But from his wife who was a Gopi, then he had a son named Parjanya. And from Parjanya came Nanda Maharaj. And Krishna is the son of Nanda Maharaj. So in this way, the term Yadava, Hare Haraya Nama Krishna Yadavaya, Ma, Namala, Yadavaya, Madhavaya, Kesha. Yadava does not only mean Krishna in Mathura and Dwarka, but Krishna is also Yadava in Raj as well, because of the lineage of Nanda Maharaj. Now, the grandfather of Krishna, Parjanya Maharaj, he was such a, a great ruler uh, that he was given the position of king of all the area of the cowherd people in Braj Mandal. And Parjani Maharaj, he was married, his wife's name was Variyasi. So, Parjani and Variyasi had five sons in this order. Upananda, Abhinanda, Nanda, Sananda and Nandana. Five sons. Hmm? So, so much, so much Nanda was coming from um, Parajanya because Parajanya means a rain cloud. And so he is like a rain cloud who is raining the Ananda. Hmm? So, when Parajanya Maharaj became old, then he wanted to reti retire with Variasi and do, go to the forest and do austerities and prepare himself to go to the spiritual world. So before leaving, he decided, I have to do the coronation ceremony of my son, Upa, eldest son, Upananda. So this is a, a, a mystery. Nanda Maharaj is not the eldest son. So why is Nanda Maharaj called Brajaraj, the king of Braja? This is the history. So the arrangement was made for the coronation ceremony of Parjani Maharaj's eldest son, Upananda, to become the king. And all sages and rishis from all over came. And all the royal families also from Mathura. They came also to this ceremony. And there was a, a throne and all the paraphernalia was there was to perform the Abhishek. Because the coronation ceremony is an Abhishek. So at that time, all the crowds were there. And Upananda, he had to give a speech to address all of his people. Now he was becoming king. So Upananda, he said from his heart, he said that even though I am the eldest son, and the, the arrangement is made for me to become the king of Braja, but I see here, all of you people are here, but all of your eyes are on my younger brother Nanda. Because Nanda is so sweet, he's so generous, he's so loving, he's so personal with everyone that he inspires love in the hearts of all. So I think that it's better that I should not become the king, but rather my younger brother Nanda should become the king. Hmm? So he said, and this is was uh, foretold. How? In my name giving ceremony. Because my name is Upananda. So Upa is a prefix in Sanskrit. It means less, it means nearby, and it means following. He said, so I am Upananda. I am not so qualified. I am less than Nanda, Upananda. I am always close to Nanda, Upananda. And I will follow Nanda, so I am Upananda. So he should become the king of Braja and then Upananda, he took a tilak and he gave the royal tilak to Nanda Maharaj. 
instead of himself receiving the tilak, he took it and he gave it to Nandamraj and sat Nandamraj on the throne and did Abhishek of his younger brother. And all the demigods showered flowers and began to sing and everyone had tears in their eyes. They were crying and saying, Jai! Jai! So in this way, Nanda Maharaj became the king of Persia. He was married to the daughter of, there was a, a, a Gopa named Sumukha Gop and his wife Patala Devi. So they had a very beautiful and qualified daughter and her name was Yashoda. So Nanda Maharaj was married to Yashoda and they ruled over Braj and everyone was so happy under the guidance of Nanda Maharaj for many many years and years and years were passing by and Nanda Maharaj became 80 years old and still Nanda and Yashoda had no son so it's a big problem all the villagers of Braja they were talking among themselves but now Nanda, Nanda, Baba is, Nanda Maharaj is the, more than 80 years old and still he has no son. Then what will happen to the dynasty? What will happen to the line? Who will be the next king? We should perform some ceremonies. We should do some jagyas for our king Nanda to have a son. So then all the bridge buses, they called Brahmanas and yagyas were going on. Swaha, swaha. Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda, they could hear. What is this? All these yagyas going on. Swaha, swaha. So then the news came. The news came to Nanda and Yashoda that, oh, the bridge buses, they're doing yagyas so that we can have a son. Nanda Maharaj said to Yashoda, oh, I think that these yagyas will not work. Mother Yashoda said, why not? He said, because I want to have a son who is more beautiful than Lord Narayan. This impossible desire came in my heart. <laughs> so by doing Karma Kanda, you can get a son. But you could not get such a son. Mother hmm? Yashoda said, huh? How did you get such a desire? Nanda Maharaj opened his heart to Mother Yashoda. He said, Shamas chanchal charu dirganaya no balastavankastale dubdudkari payodare Sputama so kridan maya lokyate Swapna stat kimu jagara kim Ere te tan nanischiate Satyam bruhi sadharamini spurati kim so yam tavapyantare Nanda Maharaj opened his heart and he said I have seen a child. Shamas chanchala charu dirganayano. He has a complexion like a fresh rain cloud. He has very long, beautiful lotus eyes which are restless and looking here and there. Hmm? And Shamas chanchala dirganayano. And he's sitting in your lap. And you're so overwhelmed with love for him that even when he's not drinking, milk is just flowing from your breast and onto your cloth and onto the cloth of the baby also. And the baby is playing there. Mother Yasoda said, hmm, when did you see this? He said, I don't know. When I see this child, I cannot understand. I'm confused. Am I dreaming or am I awake? Hmm? Mother, Nanda Maharaj said, Satyam Bruhi Sadharmini Spurati Kim So Yam Tavapyantare 
Have you also seen such a child like this in your heart? Then Mother Yashoda said, I was too shy to tell you before. <laughs> but because you have asked, then I have to say, yes, I have, sometimes I am walking and I hear the sound of tickling ankle bells behind me and I can feel someone pulling on my skirt and falling behind and I look and then there's no one there. <laughs> Sometimes in a dream I see a beautiful boy and he's decorated. I saw him. He's wearing a necklace of pearls. He's wearing bangles on his hands and, and bells on his feet and a chain of bells around his waist. And he has tilak of gorochana, yellow gorochana, and black cudgel on his eyes. And mothers are very protected to their children, so they do some mantra and tantra to protect their babies by making the spots of cudgel, black cudgel. And he has one spot here, and one spot on the palm of each hand, and one spot on the sole of each foot. And he's lying and kicking like I have seen. I was too shy to say before, but now you have asked, so I am telling you. So then Nanda Maharaj said, this boy I am seeing, I am so confused. Am I awake or am I dreaming when I see him? But I just know, he is so beautiful that such a boy could never be born by the performance of these karma kanda rituals. So then Nanda Maharaj said to Mother Yashoda, what shall we do? How can this impossible desire ever be fulfilled? Mother Yashoda said, Our Ishtadev is Lord Narayan. Only Narayan could fulfill such an impossible desire. Because Narayan has a Gatana Gatana Patiyasi Shakti, the power to make the impossible possible. So if we worship Lord Narayan, by performing a Kadasi Brat and Dwadasi Brat very strictly for one year, then I am sure that Lord Narayan can fulfill our desire. So then Nanda and Yashoda, they were following before, but now they are following very strictly, but with a prayer. Oh, may we have that very child whom we are seeing in our hearts. Time was going on. After some time, one evening, a very beautiful old lady, she was old, but she was shining. She was wearing saffron cloth, and she was holding the hand of a boy who had just graduated from Gurukul. And he was a Brahmin boy, and he looked very handsome, like a young child version of Narad Muni himself. Hmm? When she entered the village, then when the bridge basses saw her, she was so influential. She had such a prabhav. They all bowed down and they said to her, Who are you? So then she said, My name is Purnamasi Devi. Hmm? It was Yoga Maya Devi. Before Krishna appears, Yoga Maya has to come. And I am a tapasvini. I do austerities since my childhood. And by the power of these austerities, I have a vision. I can see the future. And this is my grandson. His name is Madhumanga. And because of our austerities, we always remain at the same age. Hmm? So Marumanga was a boy, but he came before Krishna was born, but he stays always same age. So when Krishna grows up, then they become friends like this, even though he came before Krishna was born. He's not older like that. He has eternal age hmm? because he's a powerful Brahmin. So when the bridge bases heard this, they were astonished. They said, Oh Bhagavati Purnamasi Devi, if you know the future, please tell us. Will Nanda and Yashoda have a, have a son? Purnamasi meditated. She said, yes. Nanda Maharaj will have a son. And that son will give Ananda to the whole universe. 
Then all the bridge buses they chanted Joy! So in this way, one night, Mother Yashoda had a dream that a girl came and the girl entered into her heart and brought along with her a beautiful baby boy. So that was Yoga Maya, not Purnamasi, but in the form of her form which looks like uh, that is Katyani. Came and brought the, the boy and so Madhya Yashoda conceived. So when Madhya Yashoda conceived, then all the Sakis, the, the ladies in the village, when they saw her, then the, mm, they said, Oh, your complexion today looks different. Your complexion looks a little bit yellowish. So we have decided you must, the child must be a boy. Because in villages, the people, they follow the Shakun Shastra. So Shakun Shastra is the scripture of omens. So from various omens, you can uh, predict the future or what is about to happen. So all the villagers, they were testing the different omens. So if a woman, when she becomes pregnant, her complexion goes a little bit yellowish, it means she'll have a boy. And if she goes a bit pinkish, it means she'll have a girl. So noticing that Madhya Shoda had a little yellowish tinge, they said, oh, it must be a boy. So then another lady came. So one shakun is that when you are burning a lamp, afterwards you can cl collect the black soot. And this black soot is used as kajal on the eyes. So she said, when I was collecting the, the, the kajal, then when I collected the kajal together, it was in like a mound. Because sometimes you collect it and it's in a circle like this, but it's dipping in the middle, like this. So, like a chula. A chula means a stove. You know, they make the, 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 uh, the clay and the cow dung round like this and then there's a dip in the middle. So, if the kajal is like a chula, then it's a shakun, an omen that a girl will be born. But if it's like a hill, then it's an omen that a boy will be born. So one Saki of Yashoda came there and said, Oh Saki, today I was collecting the kajal and it was like a hill, so you will have a boy. So all were beginning to feel great joy, a boy will be born. Another Saki came and said, Today I count, I have a bangle. And I counted with many, there are many pearls on the bangle, and I counted the amount of pearls on my bangle and it was an odd number. So if a woman will take her favorite bangle and count how many pearls are there, if it's an even number, it's a girl, and if it's an odd number, then a boy will be born. So counting the pearls, she said, oh, Mother Yashoda, it will be, surely you'll give birth to a boy. So in this way, the first, now we in the in this we were discussing the stage of our property until the age of 80 no child and how everyone was doing yagyas and so on and now mother yashoda has become pregnant now this is called property she has a child and the anantatwa the principle of joy is increasing and increasing so when mother yashoda uh, her belly started to protrude and her breast started to swell. Mm. Then the baby starts to kick in the stomach also. So when she had the first kicking of the baby in the stomach, everyone was celebrating. Madhya Shoda is very, very self-controlled. Mm. She never overeats or anything. But now she was pregnant, she was feeling I want to eat makan and mishri, a big pile of butter and some sugar candy with tossy leaves on the top. <laughs> so it's well known that pregnant women, they get strange cravings. But why was Mother Yashoda craving for makan and mishri, butter and, and sugar candy with the tossy leaf on the top? Um, because someone else was hungry. <laughs> so in this way, gradually, gradually, the anticipation and the joy 
was increasing and increasing. So when Madhya Shoda became five months old, sorry, when the, the pregnancy was in the fifth month, then you, uh, there's a ceremony that is called Pumsavan Samskar. Pumsavan Samskar. Our Brahmins, they know all these ceremonies. So in the village, when the Pumsavan Samskar is done, then all the ladies, the Sakis, the friends of Madhya Yashoda, they have to come and they have to present fruit in the lap of Madhya Yashoda. But not male fruit, uh, not uh, the female fruit. Only the male fruit, because fruits are male and female. So only the male fruit, because it will be a boy, they come and give the male fruits in the lap of Madhya Yashoda. So then the uh, Brahmanas perform the Pungsava and Samskar and this samskar is to purify the garba, to purify the uh, womb of the woman to, uh, for the birth of the firstborn. And then there's another ceremony called Simanton Nyai. And in Simanton Nyai, then the husband has to take the aushadi, Ayurvedic herbs. And the, the, the juice of the Ayurvedic herbs is taken by the husband and put in the nostrils of his wife. And by putting these Ayurvedic herb juice in the nostrils of the wife, then this gives the strength to the child in the womb. So, Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda and all the bridge buses, they are performing all these uh, ceremonies that take place during the pregnancy. And their Ananda, their joy was growing and growing. <laughs> so then, today came. That is, in Bhadrapad, the month of Bhadra, on the Astami Titi, the eighth day of the moon, on the, it was Budbar, it was Wednesday. Hmm? It's also Wednesday today. Right? So, in 5,248 years ago, that was in 3,228 years BC, on Wednesday, on today, <laughs> When the, there was the Harshan Yoga and the time of the Rohini Nakshatra during the Astami of Krishna Paksha, the dark fortnight, at midnight, hmm? at that exact time, when Krishna was born, and then Yoga Maya Devi, who was the now become Mahamaya in the hands of Kamsa Maharaj, said to Kamsa that Yatra Kwaba Purva Shatru, Yatra Kwaba Purva Shatru, your enemy who killed you in your previous life has already been born somewhere else. So just at that moment when she said that enemy who, will kill, who killed you in a previous life, who will kill you in this life, has been born somewhere else. At that moment, Yogamaya said that. Then in Gokul, Madhya Shoda and everyone fell asleep. <laughs> Sorry. They'd fallen asleep when she, Yogamaya appeared. Remember we explained yesterday. When Yogamaya appeared, they all fell asleep. But then, when Yogamaya said these words in Mathura, then all the bridge buses who were asleep, then they woke up. <laughs> and then Madhya Shoda, discovered, oh, because he was not clear to her, did she have a boy or a girl, huh? because she had fallen asleep. Now she woke up at that exact moment, and the, uh, the Dattri, the nursemaid was there, and she saw, oh, I have a, I have a boy. Hmm? So then, the sister, of Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj has two sisters. One is named Sunanda and the other is named Nandini. So Sunanda, she came from the Prasutika because the, the, in Svedic culture the men don't stand around watching their wives give birth. They have to be in the distance. Only the lady can be there and the midwives. So the um, sister of Nanda Maharaj, Sunanda, she came from the Prasutika, from the maternity room. And she came to Nanda Maharaj and told Nanda Maharaj, Oh, you have a son! So then at that moment, when Nanda Maharaj heard those words from Sunanda, his sister, You have a son! 
Now Shukadeva Goswami is describing that moment. Nandas Tvatmaja Utpane Jata Lado Mahamanaha. Mahamana means the heart, the manaha of Nanda Maharaj is Maha, very, very great. But now his son has been born. He became even more generous, even more joyful. Hmm? So Jata Lado. Jata means uh, uh, causing Lad, Alad, Ladini, Alad, Pralad. That means Ananda, joy. So what was Jata Alad? What is it that gave joy to Nanda Maharaj? Nanda's Patmaja Utpane. Nanda Maharaj too means certainly. Atmaja means Atma means the self and Ja born. So born from himself. Hmm? He's a, that that's that Atmaja means a son. In other words, the person who is Atmaja born from you is your son. And Utpanna Utpan means born. So Nanda's too. Certainly. Nanda Maharaj, Atmaja, a son, Utpanna. Utpanna means at the time when the son was Utpan born, then Jat Alada. Nanda Maharaj was in great ecstasy. And Mahamana, he became even more generous than before. So. This first line, first one and a half lines, is very significant. And it can be interpreted in many ways, but we're going to look at three prominent ways. So the first one is Atmaja Jatalado. Atmaja Jatalado. That means Nanda Maharaj experienced great pleasure from Atmaja, a son. Then Utpane Jatalado means he experienced great pleasure, Utpane, due to the birth. And then Atmaja Utpane Jatalada, he experienced great pleasure due to the birth of a son. Okay? So there are three things here. His son gave him great pleasure, the birth gave him great pleasure, and the birth of the son gave him great pleasure. Okay? Now what is the significance of this? So first of all, who was born? Atmaja. Atma means his own son. Hmm? If you adopt a child, you can be happy. But it's not, it does not give as much happiness as if your own son is born. So Atma can mean the body, or Atma can also mean the soul. So because Krishna is his biological son, He's not, he's not um, adopted from somewhere else. Because you can see, many persons say that Krishna is the foster child of Nanda Maharaj. Right? He's adopted by Nanda Maharaj. But Shukadeva Goswami is saying, no. Atmaja Jatalado. Nanda Maharaj was happy. Why? It was not a foster child. It was not an adopted child. It was Atmaja from his own body. <laughs> now, sometimes, hmm, coming from the body, will not give pleasure, the highest pleasure. Why? For example, Krishna also went into the womb of Uttara. Eh? But Krishna was not the son of Uttara. Krishna, in the form of Lashinga Day, was born from a pillar. But the pillar did not experience the joy of the, having a son. Eh? So, only being in the womb or giving birth, does, is the, just the bodily connection does not always cause joy. But here, Atmaja means soul connection. Nanda Maharaj is the eternal father of Krishna. Krishna is eternally Nanda Nanda. Namami Nanda Nanda
फर्स्ट मीनिंग आत्मज आत्मज जाचलाद नाउ द नेक्स्ट मीनिंग उत्पन्ने जाचलाद दैट कृष्ण वाज बोर्न दैट मींस दैट कृष्ण डिड नॉट फॉल फ्रॉम द स्काई यू नो वंस लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा ही फेल सम thing fall out of his nose to so, what is that then it began to grow to the size of a thumb and then he saw it's a little pig and then it began to grow and it became a huge and it was lord varahade so lord varahade he just appeared from the nose of brahma nishingadev appeared from a pillar krishna in in uh, mathura he was in the womb he disappeared from there and appeared outside he was not actually born in mathura so here putpanne means at the time of being born is very significant hmm? so krishna was born in a natural way in a, in as a as the son of nanda maharaj so putpanne jatalado he got great joy that his son was born and now we combine the two atmaja utpanne jatalado now the the meaning becomes this that krishna was born as his atmaja natural son he was naturally born as a natural son meaning when krishna was born he was not born with four arms and then become like a natural son he was born like a natural son hmm? he was not born with a crown with a chakra with a club ready come on come so let's go huh? Huh? he was not born with a kostuba money he was not born with the jewels and everything huh? with a garland hmm? but rather he was born atma jagat panne make it Hmm? with hair like this huh? was a little long and just like a natural child and because he was born naturally he had the umbilical cord connected to mother yashoda hmm? was the umbilical cord in the mathura no hmm? so this is why it's described in the next verses of this chapter that the jat karma hmm? ahuya vi prambeda gyan means Nandamaraj invited the brahmanas that to come to do the birth samskar and that also includes the cutting of the umbilical cord so there was no cutting of umbilical cord in mathura so if someone said krishna is the son of vasudev and devaki and then he came to vrindavan then we never believe them they must be a resident of mathura they can never be a real prajapati <laughs> so the third meaning atma jab utpanne jata lado he was born like a natural child no four arms no weapons no ornaments and connected with the umbilical cord so therefore ahuya means invited so nanda maharaj he had to uh, invite the brahmins so here vipran veda gyan vipra means brahmins but what does vipra mean v means vishesh roop especially and pra means prati prati means that which comes back so that means if you give a donation some dan charity to a brahmin it's not really donation but it's a pranami or dakshina so you give up your sense of ownership over something and present it to brahmana the representative of god because everything belongs to god when you give to the vipra then vipra especially prati all that wealth will come back to you many many times over so those persons to whom you give the dakshina you give some money or some wealth but it comes back to you in this life and future lives many times over they are called vipra or brahmins so these vipras they are veda gyan they have knowledge of the veda of mantra and tantra so nanda maharaj he called ahuya means invited he sent some messages tell the brahmanas to come tell the brahmanas to come so 
At that time, the messengers of Nanda Maharaj went to call the Brahmanas. Usually the Brahmanas, they're all standing around outside in the morning, in the early morning, standing around outside the palace of Nanda Maharaj, uh, ready to come and do various rituals and so on, and uh, worship for the devotees. And, uh, but uh, on this day, when the messengers came and, and told the Brahmanas, come, come quickly, come quickly, Nanda Maharaj is calling you. They said, uh, oh please, be patient, be patient. We'll come when we'll finish what we are doing. And on this day, they were trying to establish their own importance. <laughs> because an important person doesn't have to come when you call them, right? Important person, he'll arrive when he wants to arrive. <laughs> so the, though the Brahmanas, they're always outside the house of Nanda Maharaj and waiting to get in. Now, when they're being called, Ahu Yavi Prambeda Gyan, now, oh, we are very important, we'll come, just now we'll come when we are ready. <laughs> so they delayed for some time. And then the Brahmanas came in to the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. And when they saw Nanda Maharaj, they said, Badai, Badai! Badai, Badai! Badai, Badai! Badai means congratulations, congratulations! Huh? So Nanda Maharaj, he said, um, Why congratulations? Is there some reason for congratulations? Huh? Then the Brahmana said, you cannot cheat us. We are Brahmanas. We know Mantra and Tantra and Veda. We are Daivagya. We know fortune. We have already made a horoscope. We already know that you have a son. Nanda Maharaj was just testing that. So then Nanda Maharaj gave Pranam. Oh, they are very qualified Brahmanas. And he gave Pranam to them. And they presented Nanda Maharaj with the, with the horoscope. And Nanda Maharaj took it and touched it to his head and put it in a, in a high place of respect. So then, Nanda Maharaj said to the Brahman, because Nanda Maharaj never had a son before, he said, Oh Bhusura, you are like gods on earth. I don't know what to do. Now I've had a son, what do I have to do? Please tell me, what are the correct ceremonies? So then, the Brahmanas, they said, what did they say? Snata suchi alankritaha. You see, every word that Shukadev Goswami is saying is revealing uh, each step of the beautiful pastime of Krishna's birth. Hmm? So the Brahmanas, Ahuya, Ahuya, they were invited. Vipraveda Gyan, they came, they showed their knowledge of the Vedas to Nanda Maharaj, even though he tried to trick them. Oh, why did you come? Why are you saying Badai Badai? And then, oh, what do I do? So they told him, Snataha Suchi Alankrita, you should take a bath. Suchi, you should become purified. And Alankrita, you should become decorated. And then, you should uh, perform some uh, sacrifices and you should give dhan. You should give charity. That means to them. Give some dakshina to them because we are vipras. Right? So always be generous because they are vipra. Whatever you give, it will come back. So then, Nanda Maharaj, he was ready for his bathing in the Jumuna. But this uh, bathing is uh, a ritual. It's not just jumping in the lake like we did the other day when we went swimming. It's a, it's a whole ritual. So all the musicians, hmm, the sutas, the magadas, the bandis, these are sutas are the professional reciters of the Puranas. The magadas are those who sing the glories of your dynasty, of your ancestors. And then the bandis are the ones who glorify the person who are present now, like Nanda and Yashoda, and the newborn child. So the various professional musicians and singers blowing horns and beating drums and with Brahmanas and the bullock carts. Oh, thousands of bridge buses came with Nanda Maharaj in a procession, in a musical procession to the bank of the Jamuna. So then when they got to the bank of Jamuna, you can remember that last night what happened? Rain, very heavy rain. So, all the horns are blowing. All the horns are blowing in the pro procession. <laughs> Yoga Meyer is doing sound effects for the Harikata. <laughs> so then, so then, 
Nanda Maharaj, he came on the bank of Jamuna and because last night it was raining so heavily, what happens to Jamuna? Sometimes Jamuna is narrow. But, oh, especially in the summer this time, but Jamuna was very, very wide. Flooding with big waves. So Nanda Maharaj, he is an expert swimmer because it's part of his job, you know. He, t he goes out with the cows and the cows have to go in the water every day. And Nanda Maharaj is swimming every day. So even though he was more than 80 years old, he climbed up to one burj. A burj means perhaps if you see seen in Vrindavan, in the Jamuna or in Kusham Sarova, there's a ghat with steps, but there's a part where there are not steps going down, but it's like um, a jetty, a pier that goes out into the water with a tower on the top, with a beautiful pagoda on the top. So Nanda Maharaj went to the highest burj that he could find, and then... Hariwa! from the top of the bird and it went straight into the Jamuna water and when Nanda Maharaj hit the Jamuna water and disappeared under the water and the water splashed like this it was like a tarpan you know that in Vedic culture you have to make oblations of water to your to the devas and to your pitris to your ancestors so when Nanda Maharaj hit the water to have his ceremonial bath and the water splashed like this it was a tarpan to all the devas and all the pitris all his ancestors and all his ancestors became satisfied <laughs> so then when Nanda Baba went under the water hmm, then everyone on the bank was watching where did he go where did he go because if someone jumps from a high place then everyone is worried yeah, right? <laughs> what will happen? He didn't come to the surface. And everyone was worried. Where is Nanda Maharaj? Where is Nanda Maharaj? But he's such an expert swimmer. <sighs> Nanda Maharaj was in ecstasy, swimming underwater under the Jamuna. And he went very far out to the middle of the Jamuna. And just when everyone was <gasps> about to die from separation from Nanda Maharaj, he came out of the water. I'm here! <laughs> and he was swimming, doing backstroke and front stroke. And, <laughs> and his friends on the bank of the Jamuna, they were calling. Oh, Nanda Maharaj, come on, come on. Now is not the time for playing around and swimming. <laughs> because the Brahminas have said, Snata Suchi Alankrita. Now you have to go to the next word in the Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Don't just play around. <laughs> so then, Nanda Maharaj, he swam back to the shore and he came out on the shore. And now it's time for Suchi. So Suchi means that Nanda Maharaj dried himself and put on very beautiful silk pajamas and also a big skirt that was decorated with gold and silver. And then, now if a person has bathed, they dry themselves, but they're still not considered Suchi until they put on tilak. Without tilak you are not suchi, you are not clean. Even if you've taken a bath, you are not clean without tilak. So then Nanda Maharaj, he did the tilak in 12 places on his body with Bhai Mantra. Om Keshavaya Namaha, Om Narayanaya Namaha, Om Madhavaya Namaha, Om Govindaya Namaha. All 12 tilaks Nanda Maharaj put on. So Snata Suchi. And now it's time for Alankrita. Alankrita. So Nanda Maharaj, he's an older person, and young people they dress up in with so many rings and necklaces, earrings there. But older people they become more conservative. So Nanda Maharaj, he was very conservative in the way that he dressed. But today, it was uh, part of the birth ritual of Krishna that Nanda Maharaj has to be Alankrita, fully decorated. So then, first of all, Nanda Maharaj got a big colorful silk cloth, and that is a patika, and he bound it around his waist. So he's, he's got a belly and his belly hangs down, so he put the cloth around his waist and tightened it to lift his belly up. <laughs> so then, he made his turban. So he got a very colorful cloth with all types of patterns printed on the cloth. And he wrapped the turban, big turban, round and round and round like this and like that. And then made the turban. And when his friends, the other coward men, and his brothers, Abhinanda, Upananda, Sananda and, and Nanda, they saw, they said, oh, today your turban 
looks very fine, very wonderful. Why? Because there are some things that you do every day, but it doesn't always come out right. For example, you may play some music and you play it okay, but it doesn't really have a strong effect on the listeners. So just as music doesn't always have a strong effect, or just as you may cook a pudding every day, but every day the pudding is not tasty. So sometimes pudding is not tasty. And sometimes when you make a turban, sometimes the turban is good, sometimes not so good. Huh? But today when Nanamaraj made his turban, it seems random. But by Yogamaya, his turban was amazing because all the print on the cloth was just in the right place. When this part here and this part here and this part and this part hanging down here, all the print on the cloth was just in exactly the right place. So all his family members, they said, Oh, Nanda Maharaj, today your turban is very fine. <laughs> so then Nanda Maharaj, he put rings on each one of his toes. Then he put rings on each one of his fingers. <laughs> and then he started to put bangles on his arm. So the first bangle was a big bangle with the mouth of a lion on it. And then he had the other bangles which were, not, were less decorative, beautiful but less decorative. So the top one and the last one have to be specially decorated. The, the, the one that opens and the one that closes the bangle decoration. So the first one had the face of a, the mouth of a lion on it. And then the other bangles came and then he closed it and the last bangle was had the design of an elephant on it. So he put the bangles on each wrist and then he put angad, that means armlets with jewels on his arms. So then he put earrings, but not just earrings dangling down. These were earrings connected also with the chain to a top. There was a top piece of the earring as well that goes on here and then a bottom piece that goes on here and then chains and with balls dangling down. So he looked very festive. <laughs> so then Nanda Maharaj, he put the Dopatta, that is Domala. Domala means the, a string of two lines of pearls and he decorated his turban with two lines of pearls and then he put a crown on top of the turban and then he took another ornament and this ornament was a flower made of jewels and he put the flower made of jewels on one side and a white peacock feather on the other. <laughs> so his turban was just epic. <laughs> so Nanda Maharaj, he has two big lotus eyes and he has very thick dark black eyebrows <laughs> and he has a beard and moustache but his beard is mixed color some black and white like a mixture of rice and toasted sesame seeds so Nanda Maharaj he took some wax and he put on his moustache and made his moustache instead of growing down like this he took it out and made it going up like this on his cheeks hmm? so his moustache looked very nice on his cheeks like this hmm? and with his beautiful turban and his belly lifted up and he took a golden staff with many jewels on the golden staff and then he was standing there and all the bridge buses saw Nanda Maharaj and they said, oh, Adbut, astonishing, Ascharya, amazing, Chamatkar. Everyone was struck with wonder. They said, oh, just see, today, Nanda, Nanda Maharaj looks like the personification of Vatsalya Rasa. He is the personification of parental love. He is fatherly love personified. And that's, they're saying that as a compliment, but actually even metaphysically and ontologically. <laughs> when transcendental, eternal, fatherly love condenses, it becomes this form. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> So then, one of his friends said, one of his older friends, seeing him all decorated like this, he said, he said to the others, oh, just see this old person all dressed up, uh, with so many ornaments. And then Nanda Maharaj heard that, he says, you may be old, but I am not old. Today I had a son. 
<laughs> so then Nanda Baba, he returned, he went into his palace uh, because the function now, all the ceremonies will begin. So, just see how Shukadeva Goswami has beautifully, he's seeing everything mm -hmm. and describing this. So then, Nanda Maharaj went to Madhya Shoda and to see his baby for the first time. Hmm? So the ceremony that has to be done now, now the Jata Karma has to be done, the, the birth ceremonies. So part of that is that uh, the father has to take a golden stick, a stick of gold, and dip it in honey, yogurt and ghee, and then write Khrim, Khrim in Sanskrit. It is the Saraswati beach because the goddess of learning should come on your tongue right so you speak always truthful and beautiful words so the father has to write khrim the saraswati beach in honey yogurt and ghee with a golden stick on the tongue of the child so nanda maharaj came and then he he did that ceremony and then the father has to say a mantra and by that mantra he makes the mother give breast milk to the child and Madhya Shoda began to give breast milk to our Kadayala Krishna. Mm -hmm. So they did the um, Jatakama ceremonies and then uh, Nanda Maharaj went into the part of his palace where they performed the Yagyas to the Yagya Mandap and he sat down in the Yagya Mandap and then under the guidance of the Brahmanas the um, Havan ceremony, fire sacrifice was performed to please the Pitris and the Devas, the demigods and the ancestors. So <coughs> the ceremony performed was called Nandi Mukasradha. Nandi Mukasradha. So they did the Nandi Mukasradha and Swaha Swaha. Nanda Maharaj was uh, under the guidance of the Bra Brahmins uh, doing all the rituals for the fulfillment of the Nandi Mukasradha. So then it was time to, to give Daan, Dakshina, some pranami, some uh, charity to the Brahmanas. So then in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami says that, sh that Nanda Maharaj gave in charity 20 lakhs cows. So 1 lakh is 100,000. So 20 times 100,000. Nanda Maharaj was giving cows. But Shukadeva Goswami said he didn't give them directly. It says he caused them to be given. That means that he told his servant, you take this many cows to that Brahmin's house. You take this many cows to that Brahmin's house. So the servants of Nanda Maharaj were delivering huge numbers of cows uh, to the houses of the Brahmanas. But these cows, their horns were uh, plated with gold and their hooves were plated with silver. They were decorated with yellow handprints of turmeric, haldi, handprints on their bodies. They had necklaces of pearls. They had silk cloths on their backs. And they had uh, strings of pearls hanging from their, from their tails as well. So each cow was actually worth a fortune. What to speak of the fact that each cow in, in Gokul is a karma a wish-fulfilling cow that can fulfill all desires. But they were also decorated with all the jewels and pearls and silks. And flower garlands also. So in this way, the servants of Nanda Maharaj were bringing great treasure of cows to all the houses uh, of the Brahmanas. So then, each Brahmana was surprised. Oh, more and more cows are coming to my house. So then one Brahmana said to his friend, another Brahmin, he said, Oh, this is Nanda Maharaj. Does he want to make every place in the world into a Goshala? <laughs> I have no place to, I put these cows here, I put them over there, I run out of space, I have nowhere to sleep myself. <laughs> so in this way the Brahmanas were joking that Nanda Maharaj is giving them so many cows, they have nowhere to live themselves. So then another Brahmin said, oh stop complaining. He's not really complaining, this bridge bus is often complain, but it's just their, their crooked way of speaking, <laughs> their way of joking. So another Brahmin said, don't worry, now, from now on we won't have to cook. 
We won't have to cook rice or dal or anything. We'll just live on rubbery and malai. We'll live on rubbery and rasa malai. So these are very delicious milk preparations. So in this way, the Brahmins were joking with each other. So the Brahmins, they told Nanda Maharaj, he said, what else should I give in charity? And they said, you should give Tiladri. So Tiladri is a mountain of sesame seeds. And it's actually a model Mm, of the uh, universe. So in the middle, there's a Mount Sumeru made of sesame seeds. And then there's a, there are four trees, and then the Ganges of ghee is running down in four directions. The Alakananda and the Mandakini, and, and like this. So the various branches of the Ganges are running down the four sides of the Mount Sumeru. And it's beautifully decorated, it's huge. And on the top also there was a model of Lord Brahma as well, because his court. Remember we said yesterday that Mother Earth, she didn't go to Satchalok, but she went to Brahma's court on the top of Mount Sumeru. So with these uh, models of Mount Sumeru and the, the four, four streams of the Ganges and the various dweeps surrounding them, Nanda Maharaj had these made and he delivered seven of them to the different uh, most senior Brahmins in the community of Praja. So then, everyone was satisfied, everyone was feeling so uh, overjoyed by Nanda Maharaj's generosity. So this is why Shukadev Goswami is saying, Maha Manaha, on this day, the heart, the Manaha of Nanda Maharaj, though he is already generous, but on the birth of his son, Maha Manaha. He became more generous, giving everyone so much cows, they have nowhere to stay, and giving the tiladris to the brahmanas also. So then, all the bridge buses, they decorated Gokul. They cleaned all the streets and they made many gates everywhere. They made gates of uh, flowers, gates of cloth, and uh, gates of leaves, and also gates of pearls. So when there's a festival, you should make gates, erect them everywhere. So all over Gokul was decorated with these gates. They decorated all the cows and bulls. And now Nanda Maharaj himself was Alankritaha, so decorated, he told all the other coward boys, everyone, you, all the coward men and boys, all of you decorate yourself. So then they all went away and Upananda, Abhinanda, Nanda, Sananda and others, all the coward men, they decorated themselves in a festive way and all the wives also of the, the gopis, the elderly gopis, they also decorated themselves very beautifully. So then, when the men were decorating themselves, then the, the maid servants, they called out to the ladies, Oh, why are you sleeping? Hmm? Yashoda has given birth to a boy, you should decorate yourself. So then, all the coward ladies, they decorated themselves with Sola Sringa and Dwarash Abarana. So Dwarash Abarana means 12 types of golden ornaments. Hmm? Like nose rings, earrings, this decoration which goes here, this decoration which goes here to here, and uh, on the fingers and the, and the bangles and the arms and on the toes and the newport, all golden ornaments and necklaces also. And Sola Shringa means 16 types of cosmetics. So there's a Sindur here and uh, sandalwood paste made on the board, body and kumkum on the top of the breast and chandan in the middle and kasturi underneath and in this way, alta on the feet. In this way, they had 16 types of cosmetics, kajal on the eyes and the tilak and so on. And then they uh, set out for the house of Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Gokul. So usually the ladies of Braja, they, are, they move very gracefully. They move very gracefully. But today they're beautifully decorated and their faces are shining like lotus uh, flowers. 
and they quickly go in. They're very excited to go and meet with Mother Yashoda and see the newborn baby. So they're walking very quickly and all the parts of their body are jiggling here and there. And their children are running behind them. And sometimes the children are spacing out so they're turning around and saying, come on, come on. And making their children come faster. And gradually like this, all the coward ladies are with their children, they arrived in the Nanda Bhavan. Their hair were decorated with flowers and as they were rushing, the flowers were falling from their hair. So then, when they arrived at the palace, as they were arriving, they took their veils and they covered their faces. Because Nanda Maharaj was there. So they don't show their face at that time. So they covered their faces and Nanda Maharaj, seeing all the ladies arriving, he said, Swagatam! Welcome, welcome! Please come inside. And he showed them, because the house has the, the main entrance, and then you come into one part of the palace, and then there's the courtyard, inner courtyard, and then there's the Antapur, the inner part where all the ladies go. So Nanda Maharaj led the ladies through the courtyard and showed them, oh, the Antapur is there, you can go inside. So then, when the ladies went inside where Mother Yashoda was, as soon as they approached Mother Yashoda, then they took off their veils. Huh? And they were very eager to see, to see the child. So when they saw Mother Yashoda, the, the, all the ladies, they, said, oh, Chirin, they gave a blessing to Mother Yashoda. Chirin Jeevi Baba, may you become, have a long life, have a long life. So then the Sakis of Mother Yashoda said to her, you must be so proud that you have had a son. And Mother Shoda said, no, no, it is only by your blessings. <laughs> Mother Shoda is very sweet and humble. I am not proud to have a son. I know it is only because all of you have blessed me. <laughs> so then the Saki said to Mother Shoda, show us the face of the child. Because the Krishna was there but covered with a cloth. Show us the face of the child. So Mother Shoda was about to uncover the cloth. And the nurse came, the Datri, the, who had, was the midwife during the birth. She came and stopped them. No, you cannot see the face of the child until you give the Dakshina donation to me. Right? Because who was the midwife? Everyone should give some Dakshina to the midwife. Huh? So actually, they, Bridge Master, they are not greedy, but this is the nature of Braj. Everyone acts in this way to play jokes on each other. And this increases the anurag, the eagerness to have the darshan of Krishna. Like now you are listening and you are thinking, oh, now we want to see Krishna's face through the Harikata, but you all now. <laughs> I cannot see. So the nurse said, no, no. No looking, no peeping at the face of Krishna. <laughs> Until you give that, I am the Datri, I am the midwife, so you have to give some Dakshi to me. So then all the ladies, they started to take off their necklaces and ornaments to give something uh, to the midwife. But she said, no, no, no. I want first from Yashoda. Yashoda should give first. So then Yashoda said, I'll, I'll give you something later. She said, no, no. So always people promise, I, I make a pledge to give so much <laughs> money and then later they never give. So if you say that you're going to give Dakshin, you have to give it right now. <laughs> you can learn so much from Harikata. <laughs> so then Madhya Shoda said, what do you want? And she said, I want a necklace like this and earrings like this. She spoke. And then Madhya Shoda called her servant and said, yes, give. So then Madhya Shoda gave the Dakshina to the midwife and she received it. So then, but then after she received it, the midwife was feeling so much love for Krishna that she saw it. Tears were coming in her eyes. I am not just the midwife. He's also my son. <laughs> so she took off her own necklace. They'd given her some necklaces, but she took off her own necklace and went to the window and in praying she threw her, threw her necklace out of the window. And there were so many bridge buses outside. So one beggar was there. Hmm? You would be very lucky if you could be that beggar and catch that necklace. And he took it thinking that it was the Mahaprasad of Madhya Shoda. Hmm? So then, hmm, the, uh, 
Mid, the Madish, the nurse, the midwife allowed Madi Shoda to re re remove the cloth and all the sack is Shoda. They saw. Oh! Jio Shamala Hala, Jio Shamala Hala. Oh, may you give a, have a long life and they're all blessing the child. Mm. So then, now it's time for the Mahotsav, the big celebration. All the villagers have arrived in Nandabhavan and come into the courtyard. And many musicians came there. There are musicians that play horns, musicians that play flutes, musicians that play different types of string instruments. There are so many musicians who play different types of drums, like verdanga and mm, mm, dole, big kettle drums, all types of drums. So many expert musicians came and they began to play very beautiful music. And all the bridge basses, they were singing. today. All oh, glories to Nandalao, the newborn baby. Hati dia, gaura dia, aura dia, palki, jai kanaya lalki, hati gaura palki. It means the people are coming with toys for the baby. So hati means some people came with a toy elephant. Gaura means some people came with a toy horse. And some people bought a nice uh, cot, a cradle that was swinging like this. So everyone was coming with gifts for the child. Hati Gorapalki, Jaikanaya Nalki. So, in this festival, first, the lady you've seen in Brad, you know, they put the cloth over the head and the lady stands. <laughs> so the ladies were in the middle of the courtyard and they were all dancing and the men were around the outside of the dance, uh, around the outside and they were watching how the ladies were dancing so joyfully. So in Braj, now today it will be dancing lessons. Braj dancing lessons. Because in Braj, all the folk dances are based on their daily life. The things that they do in their daily life. So for example, uh, the cowherd men, sometimes they have to plow the earth. So they have to hold the plow and they go like this. And the bull is pulling the plow. Huh? So this is one dance move, plowing the earth. Okay, everyone? Everyone, practice. Uh, so then also, in the village, you also have to water the plants. On the dairy farm, you have to water the plants. So then you'll have to take a big kalash and go. Huh? Right? So then, sometimes, uh, in the farming, everything depends on the weather, right? The movements of the sun and the moon. So you always have to be watching out. Oh, when is the sun rising? When is the moon rising? The sun is, the sun is setting over here and the moon is rising over there. Like this, eh? Also, Sometimes you have to cross the river, and then what you have to do? You have to row the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sometimes you, the gopis, they'll have to thresh the grain. Hmm? They have to thresh the grain. <laughs> like this. So in this way, 
<laughs> all, were, all were singing. The gopis are dancing in the middle, and when the gopis are uh, dancing, then the men around outside taking the signal from the ladies who are dancing in the middle, then they're replying with the same dance movement. and the men on the outside were following them. But then, the gopas were thinking, why should the women be in the middle and do all the dancing? We will show our dance moves also. Hmm? We should show our dance moves. But then they thought, but it's n it won't be appropriate if we're the first to dance. It's Nanda, Nanda Maharaj's son has been born. He should be the first one to dance. So Nanda Maharaj, he wasn't there when the dancing was going. He was somewhere else. He was meeting with guests and he was talking. So they sent a message. Go and tell Nanda Maharaj. He could come and dance. should come here and dance. Everyone is having a wonderful time. <laughs> Everyone's covered in yogurt. <laughs> That's why Sri Shukha Uvacha is telling this verse. And <laughs> Because the yogurt is coming on his face. <laughs> In ecstasy. This is Harikata. Harikata is not a, just a discussion. Harikata means that Ya Sutwa Tat Bhavet. You enter into the Leela and experience the Leela. So the messenger went to Nanda Maharaj. And the, the messenger said, Oh Nanda Maharaj, come and see how beautiful. Uh, is the dance and you also please come and dance so then Nanda Maharaj he was very enthusiastic his son had been born but he has some gravity you know all the persons senior persons who have responsibility they have the, the gumbir they have some gravity mm -hmm. so Nanda Maharaj was he was happy but no I'm, I'm not going to go there and dance mm -hmm. because he was thinking I'm an old person, if I go and, and dance uh, with all the young persons, then people will criticize, they will say, who does he think he is? Is he the only person in the world who ever had a child? Yeah, yeah everyone had a child, why is he being over-enthusiastic like this? So Nanda Maharaj, he was reserved and he was very great. So then that messenger came back to the men who were on the outside of the ladies' dance and said he, he won't come. So then one clever person said, oh, Tell him that uh, Upananda, his elder brother, is here and he's calling him. <laughs> it was a trick. Because 
And then the Maharaj, though he's the king, but actually Upananda should have been the king. And his elder brother, he loves him and honors him so much. So, then one messenger said, Oh, Nanda Maharaj, the Upananda is calling you. Please come soon. <laughs> so then Nanda Maharaj, he came, and he came to the place where everyone, were, all the ladies were dancing and the men were on the outside. And he came and he was looking around. Where is Upananda? Where is Upananda? And just then, when he was looking around, like this, one coward man with a big silver pot full of milk snook up behind Nanda Maharaj and poured it right over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Nanda Maharaj said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now he was salting milk. What are you doing? What are you doing? He said, Dudan Nahao, Putan Palau. That means, your son has been born. Take bath in milk and celebrate it. <laughs> so now Nanda Maharaj was soaking wet. <laughs> that milk washed away all his gravity. <laughs> and now he wasn't afraid to dance anymore. And uh, Nanda Maharaj went into the middle. The gopis, the ladies who were in the middle, they went to the sides. And Nanda Maharaj went in the middle to show everyone his dance moves. <laughs> and now all the men, Upananda, Abhinanda, Sananda, Nanda, they all joined, all the brothers and all the coward men joined. And all the men who were dancing in the middle. And now they were showing the moves and the ladies around the side, they were following the moves that the men were doing. Like this. So. in the evening for more the, at five o'clock there'll be Abhishek, Bhajans, Kirtan and more Harikata in the evening. Yeah. Yeah.